Shalom and welcome to today's program, The Lord Reigns. I'm Minister Gertrude Bradley and there is a very wonderful program in store for you to view and hear today. The Holy Spirit is here, I am here, and I have a very, very special, wonderful, anointed, talented woman of God with me, and her name is Josie Martin. Yay, I'm happy to have you here. <laughs> Thank Josie. you so much, Gertrude. I'm excited. <laughs> excited. I know she's blessed to be here, mm -hmm. and you're going to hear some wonderful things about Josie and from Josie. Um, she is a missionary extraordinaire. Uh, she is a woman that of purpose, a woman who has really been used of God in so many, she has worked with the young lady, she works with the youth, she works with, I think whatever God just says, you know what Josie, I want mm -hmm. you to be there, she does it. So. <laughs> I don't think she turns him down for anything, but you know, she's been a, a blessing in so many ways and you're going to hear about it in, in a very few minutes. So uh, before we get into talking about uh, missions, I want to show you some video of mission work that we've done recently and uh, you're welcome to start showing it uh, at any time, Jack. And um, I'm going to just describe to you what, what you're seeing of the work that, that we've done. Uh, that's what this program is going to be about. It's going to be all about the working of missions. It's about God sent ones. So there I am and we're in Egypt and we were at a conference and this was uh, a conference that had ministers and, and pastors uh, that were being taught the Word of God and as you can see they're, they're uh, male and female and they um, are worshiping the Lord and um, here they're actually we were receiving communion we were uh, allowing communion to be shared here we have um, <laughs> just going through quickly that's as a shot of the worship team the worship team ministering, Minister Catherine worshiping. And that was one of the pastors, one of the head pastors that was over the conference. And then Dr. Benjo is blowing the shofar. Uh, there's Bishop. Uh, they're just, just worshiping and praising God. So it is um, a time of just the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. It, it, missions is never anything that is really, really very specific. Missions is meeting the, meet, the needs that God has for his people at all times in whatever way is needed. As you see there, this bishop is ministering to someone. That's the uh, ministry of song going forth. That's the laying on of hands going forth. All of that is the work of missions because and I will explain it um, from the scriptures as we go on a little bit later but it the Lord gave us the commission to go into all the world to teach his people to preach the good news to proclaim liberty to those who are captive to lay hands on to sick to be to baptize his people with the Holy Spirit and baptize them in water as well and so uh, these are all the things that the Lord has commissioned us that is his great commission and so those of us who work in the mission field this is what we do and the Lord said that he would confirm his word with signs following and I'm telling you we have actually seen physical signs before us, Josie, yeah. as we have been out on the, the, the mission field. Not just the, the, the result of a, of, a, of a person being healed or something like that, but uh, as a matter of fact, when we were in Egypt at this particular one that you're seeing right here, there was, we went out of our room and there was a harvest moon mm. in the sky. 
not just a regular moon, but a harvest yes. moon. It was orange and it was very large and it was very prominent. And we had just gotten away from our briefing and we had already done a session. And when we got there, we were so excited when we walked out and saw the harvest moon because to me, that was the Lord showing us, giving yes. us a physical sign in the sky saying, you know what, the harvest is plentiful yes. and my laborers are here to take care yes. of the harvest. And so it was exciting for us to, to go and, and to, to see that harvest moon. As you can see here in some of the, the uh, scenes that you're seeing, um, the medical mission, the part we were um, addressing the medical needs, you know, of the people that were there. This was when we uh, landed in the airport and we prayed right there on the spot in the airport. And that was totally unheard of. <laughs> there you can see the pyramids in the background. And here is a, a, a shot of the team as we were um, there near the pyramid. That's a wonderful shot of Bishop uh, actually in the distance at the pyramid. So these are some of the team members that um, were there and that shows that we actually were there in Egypt because you see the pyramids in the background. So it was a wonderful time. <laughs> There's our fearless leader, Jack. He's, <laughs> he's right there and that's his beautiful sister, Pastor ja Jane, which is his sister in Egypt. And there's Jack and Bishop. So um, it was a, oh, isn't that sweet? <laughs> She's hugging her son. <laughs> and I love that shot of us uh, yes. putting the pyramid under our arms. So anyway, that was just a little, a taste of the time that was spent there and the work that was done there in Egypt. And I'm going to go, um, to some of the scriptures um, that I wanted to refer to and then I'm going to let you hear from Josie real soon. But um, Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 and 20 says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. It's been given to Jesus. And in verse 19 it says, Therefore, you go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And so what is it that he has commanded? He's given us his word. Teaching them his word is is, is, is what we're trying to get them to obey everything about his word. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And that is the word of God from the Gospel of Matthew and I have others. So, Josie, my dear Hello, sister, dear. I want you to share uh, some of the, what should, should I say? I don't want to say highlights because there's probably far too many highlights to cover in, in the short time that we have. But I would like the importance, maybe, from your perspective of what missions, the work of missions really entails and what it actually produces and what it does for the, the kingdom of God. I'd like for you to share that. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for inviting me, first of all, to be here I and to uh, be able to share our story of missions. Okay. You know, the Word of God says, go, go, G-O, go. And so we go, and my husband and I have been going since he, since 1998, and I started in 2000. So for 20 plus years, we have left the comfort of our home mm -hmm. going into a foreign land and the land God has called us to is South Africa okay we go to Johannesburg South Africa mm -hmm. uh, we've done work in Cape Town also one of the most gorgeous cities in mm -hmm. the world Cape mm -hmm. Town if you have not been there and wealthy and wealthy mm -hmm. and um, but the wealth of the people the wealth of the people their hearts the way they care about you 
when we started going, um, we told them that we would be back the next year. Mm -hmm. And they said, yeah, we heard that before. Mm -hmm. And we were like, excuse me, why are you being a little sarcastic about us saying we're going to come back? They said, you Americans always say you're coming back, but you never come back. Oh. You never come back. Mm -hmm. And so we said, watch, we'll be back. Mm -hmm. And we have gone back for 20 years. Amen. Even one year during COVID, we went Amen. back. I, I was able to go back. Ron was caring for it, um, a family member, but I was able to go back uh, mm -hmm. for one um, season for you know a couple of weeks. And it was a blessing being there back at home in Amen. South Africa. Amen. So the impact, if I can share that with you, yes. what we do, we... Um, we don't do the housing where we're painting houses or building houses for, for the people. We're building the character and the souls of the people to help them grow and go and do the things God has called them to do. I guess you would kind of say you're teaching them how to fish. How to fish. Rather than providing the fish, exactly. you're teaching them how to fish, exactly. which is actually more effective and more beneficial. And, and it goes a lot longer. It leaves the legacy. Yes. From generation to generation, it leaves Amen. the legacy. And so we have, as a matter of fact, I can, if I can share, uh, one of our sons, we, once they become part of our heart, yes. we um, call, they're our children. We have adopted three, not by legal adoption, but by heart adoption. Mm -hmm. And one of our sons is an architect. He is wonderful. He, architect, he's He's called all over South Africa to do the work that he's doing. Another one is a computer uh, specialist, mm -hmm. and he does things for accounting firms, uh, like we have Ernst and & Ernst, and um, Deloitte, I believe, is another name of one of the companies. These are great opportunities for them so they can build stability in their family and be, like the Word of God says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children children. Now can I ask you a question? Sure. So how did you acquire these children? The, uh, to meet with them? Yeah, how did you acquire them in the first place? The first thing that we did, we uh, were able to be blessed to have met some pastors in uh, the, from Johannesburg. They came here, as a matter of fact, to a fit with a meeting. Okay. And we met them. We said, oh, we're, go we're wanting to go to South Africa. And they said, well, come. We will see that you have the people that you need for your classes. And we still have great relationships with them. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of the daughters, we actually went to their weddings. Uh, they timed it so we would be there for their weddings. And we've been able to be long distance godparents to oh, their children, amen. which is wonderful. So we've had a great, great uh, time. You know, you were mentioning some of the uh, miracles or things that ha have happened. We had one young man, and I'm not sure if it was the year that you were there or not, but one young man, a mother came over to us and said, excuse me, uh, she came in crying to our session and said, my son, my son, he, there's a demon in here. There's a demon in him. Uh, Do you yeah, remember I was that? there. Mm -hmm. And um, we said, we left other people in charge of, the, of our conference. You know, we didn't miss a beat. And I went over with some of the young adults that had gone with us. And this young man was almost swinging from the fence like a monkey. He, this demon had him so oppressed. Mm -hmm. And so I said, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be delivered? And he, you could hear this little voice coming out of him mm -hmm. way back. He says, yes. Mm -hmm. And he is foaming at the mouth just going through all this. In the name of Jesus, we ain't got time to play. We got to go back to take care of our business. Mm -hmm. And he, um, I said, in the name of Jesus, come out now. Mm -hmm. And I turned around on my hips and went on back to our conference. Next thing I know, here comes this little man swinging his arm, free as he could be, came and sat in our session, and then got up and gave a testimony of who he was. Do you remember that? I do remember that. And I remember, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I, I didn't know you were going to share that mm -hmm. particular story, but I have a picture. <laughs> Do you really? Um, I have I a picture of him, and he was smiling, mm -hmm. and he was so happy. And, and I remember that the young uh, uh, ladies that, were, uh, that went with you to mm -hmm. assist in uh, dealing with him yes. 
were so happy because this was their first mission trip mm -hmm. and um, they kind of got into uh, big people lane, you know, with that because, um, you know, having to deal with a, a demonic spirit and, and one that was vexing and very obviously, you know, controlling this young man uh, is not uh, for the weak at heart or the no. faint at heart and the, the people. If you are not sent and called of God to go on a mission trip, I'm telling you, you need to just wait until you are because you do encounter you things can. like that because that's, that's part of, 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 of missions. It it's part of, um, of being instant and in season and available yeah. to uh, do the work of God. So yes, I absolutely do remember uh, that happening and, and that young man walking into that session just so smiling and happy and free. just being set free. Yeah from the oppression that you know was over him and so I'm, I'm, I'm like it was interesting thing that you said about that story because he his mother Heather. is the one that came to the missionaries mm -hmm. crying mm -hmm. saying can you help my child mm -hmm. so the mother for for whatever reason or what wherewithal the mother did not know what to do in order to help her own child and the Lord sent missionaries from the United States all the way from across all the way. world to be there at that time and at, 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 in that season mm -hmm. to meet that need and to take care of that situation. Mm -hmm. That's how good God is. And so, you know, I, that's what I love about the, the, the idea of missions. So missions is so important supporting missions and and you were telling me a story a little bit earlier before we got started about um, no or was it just now that you said that you you needed three thousand right dollars before we started uh -huh. yeah that um, you guys you and your husband Ron her husband I, I'm, I'm calling them you guys okay mm -hmm. Josie and her husband Ron I'll be mm -hmm. more accurate about that uh, were wanting to return on the mission field and um, it takes a lot of money and, and you can, can attest to that. It, it takes a lot of money to do the work of missions because there's so much work to do. Um, and you were saying that you're just short $3,000. That's all they were short. And so they started raising the funds to get there, and then they came across one individual who was like, well, you know, I had the $3,000, all you had to do was just ask me, you know, and uh, it would have been taken care of. But still, all in all, mm -hmm. you know, um, it, it, it takes a lot of resources, it takes a lot of planning, mm -hmm. you know, like you mentioned before, you know, um, even to participate with uh, the ones that you are familiar with, with their wedding and what have you, to coordinate that time, to coordinate those resources, to coordinate um, uh, the, your work schedules, yes. to coordinate the care of your home, to coordinate the maintenance of your car, to coordinate mm -hmm. you know, uh, what you need to do with an airline, uh, your accommodations, everything that needs to happen in a, it, I'm just saying these things because missions is a lot. Missions requires stamina. Missions requires tenacity. Missions requires diligence. Missions requires submission. Missions requires a fellowship with the Holy Spirit unlike any other. Without a doubt. Because, and, and I'm sure that you can attest to this, Josie, that you have the most well-laid plans, mm -hmm. and then when you get there, and you're going through what the Lord is sending you there to do, everything changes. 
And, and it's not that things are topsy-turvy or whatever, but the Lord is saying, okay, in your mind, you care to set this in order and to meet this need and what have you. It's just like the, going back to the story of the young man that was ministered to. We didn't go there with a plan to no minister way. to this particular uh, youth or, or this particular young man. But the Lord was meeting that need, and so we had to turn the plans of whatever it is that you were planning to do in the meeting that you had come to do mm -hmm. and address that situation and then go back to that meeting. Exactly. And this is very uh, simply the, the nature, you know, that, that happens in mission. So I'm not taking up. I want you, you to hear more from Josie about... Um, uh, what you do on the mission field, and, yeah. and, and so you're saying you go to Cape Town and, and Joburg mm -hmm. and... Um, well, Cape Town is, our, excuse me, Joe Connorsburg is our main field. Okay. That's our, our vineyard. Okay? okay. But we have overflow in Cape Town because we've been called to Cape Town to minister to them. Uh, but in Johannesburg, what we actually do, we feed the hungry okay we work with um, a wonderful Indian pastor that's in South Africa yes we've been blessed to minister as some of you may know and may not know there is uh, different um, people groups I could say of course you'll have the tribal ones uh, people from you know the Zulu the Kosas the um, you know Shingani all, all those and then you have the blacks the whites the colors that we don't use here in America much mm -hmm. anymore, and uh, the Indians. And so we, we also, along with the blacks, we also have the colors, and we do have whites, and Indian people that we minister to. Well, we have a project among in our group, and we call it the I Can See Project. And what it does is provide reading glasses to senior citizens. Oh, okay. Reading glasses, so we gather all these reading glasses we don't do prescription glasses because we're not doctors. Right. But seniors, as they get older, they tend to um, the needing to come up closer. Mm -hmm. Menu gets a little bit too far gone mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. your eyes. So we do that. And the way we got the name I Can See program, we would have a magazine there for them to find out if it was the right prescription for them. And they say, oh. Mama, I can see, I can see, <laughs> and it was such a joy, I can see, and uh -huh. they just get tears, because for years they hadn't been able to see mm -hmm. well to read because mm -hmm. they didn't have the glasses. So we started that with, uh, through one of our friends, Dr. Roslyn um, Hill, she's awesome. And then we also feed them. Okay. And if I can tell this one real quick miracle about Go right that, ahead. it's so exciting. We're with Pastor Segi, who is, you know, our Indian pastor, who is just Oh, I remember my, Pastor Segi. Oh, I just love his so wife, much. yes. And, yes, and she's with the Lord now. Oh, and okay. so, But we miss her, but her work still goes on. Amen. But we were feeding, and we went to a park area, and we had this big, huge pot of, they call it, instead of hamburger meat, they say minced meat. Okay. And they had this pot of minced meat, you know, kind of like a spaghetti sauce with meat in it, and we had rice and bread and so the people coming the homeless the hungry came from all over to get they had their little tupperware looking things you right know. they bring their own tupperware all, things yeah, i remember, remember that, that. yes mm -hmm. yes and so we're ladling and ladling it. and i'm getting concerned because i'm an administrator i'm practical sometimes and i'm looking so ooh, i'm looking at the line of people and i'm looking at the pot it's not gonna last <laughs> more people than there is meat uh -huh. okay and so I says, but Father God, Multiply. we're going to keep going, mm -hmm. keep going, we know. And literally, when we serve the last p person, we scraped up that and put that in there. And every single person received. Was fed. We, it was amazing. There was no way on God's green earth that, okay, it were, that it made sense. That it made sense. But there's no way, it may, there's a difference between faith and there's a difference between faith. Sense. Ooh, a different amen. between faith and sense. We trust God for everything. Yes. Even flying the 24 plus hours yes. to get to South Africa, it takes us that long to fly there. It's, it's an act of faith. Who wants to be up in the air? 
But when you know you're going to do what God has called you to do, yes. it's a joy. Or that people say, well, how do you do, do it? it? I get in a plane. I sit there. We pray. We watch movies. We eat. We sleep. Yeah. And we arrive at our destination. Amen. It's a joy. It's Amen. a joy. It is a joy. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, we do similar mm -hmm. work um, when we go on the mission field. Um, we have, like you saw, our medical missions um, in the video mm -hmm. there. And uh, we bring readers as well, you know, different strengths. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, again, it, as you already uh, mentioned, that um, it, they're not prescription because we're not trying to uh, give people a prescription lens. But we do uh, have a, a, a skilled doctor yeah. that is there that will make a recommendation, mm -hmm. you know, for them to have their eyes examined for the readers. And mm -hmm. so we, we bring the readers and, you know, we uh, I usually have the word of God, you know, there and the, the, the workers will do that and then they'll test their eyes mm -hmm. with that to see what strength works for them. So we do that. And of course, naturally, we feed and... Um, we, I have a story also when we were in the one, the first time I went to the Philippines, well, I've only been to the Philippines one time, mm -hmm. and uh, Bishop was teaching at this um, university campus, and the expectation was for about 500 people, and, um, and, sh and Anywhere that Bishop goes, she's going to feed the people yes. wherever she goes. It's, it's just a, a biblical example that exactly. she goes by and that she follows. And we were there for, uh, and the food had been ordered in advance for 500. But then <laughs> the team <laughs> arrives and we have 750. Mm -hmm. So I saw... <laughs> I saw where that just the manifestation of being able at like on the spot and I, I don't know if, it, if it's registering to the people but we're talking about 250 yes. okay. more orders of food than had originally been planned for. Not only was it the resources but the food to be prepared and ready and ready to go so that it could feed those people in time. Mm -hmm. I saw that happen in manifestation in the Philippines. It does. And, you know, and, and it's still, I, I shouldn't say that it, 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 it wows me. I think it wows my mind. I think in my spirit, we're just like, yeah, that's just God. <laughs> you know, my spirit is like, you go, God, that's how you do it. And that's how you show yourself strong each time. You never let your children see shame that are on uh, the mission field, you, you just, just don't allow it. It's not possible. And so when you said that that pot was, lo said you're looking at the pot and the pot is looking scarce and the line is looking greater than the pot and the Lord is just like, I'll just be able I to continue you. to scoop out of that pot. Mm -hmm. It'll just keep uh, multiplying until it's done, until the work is done. And that is just the Lord confirming his word with signs following over and over and over again. And I'm sure that there are other examples mm -hmm. like that that you have seen. And, and I think there was one time when we were in Egypt, as a matter of fact, the story. And uh, one of the workers, evangelist, uh, Bertie, was, um, she had the balcony area of, of that particular conference mm -hmm. center. That was like, she would just, go up there and then, you know, they'd be happy to, to, to have her and see her up there. And I think they, they needed communion. Okay. And there was a limited amount in the communion tray, you know, to, to pass out there. And the thought that went through her mind as she shared it in with the group is that, hmm, don't seem like there's enough. But she didn't speak it out. There's not enough to go around. But she just, looked, she just said, Lord... We need communion for everybody up here. And they just kept passing it out and passing it out and passing it out and passing it out and passing it out stop. until everybody was able to receive the communion, mm -hmm. you know, up there and, and there was no lack. So these are, these are not fables. No. These are real, true-to-life situations 
that happen, that manifest on the mission field. So part of what I'm here to do is to implore those of you that have a heart for missions, whether you uh, have a heart to go and be on the mission field yourself, mm -hmm. or you just want to see the work of missions done to have an effect and a change in the lives of the people of God all over the world, then you can participate in being a missionary by blessing the people of God financially, by being able to allow those that are being sent to go. Because it's, it, it's, it's very, very, very important. And, um, you know, like I, I think I shared with you, uh, Josie, that we're going back to Egypt in June. Mm -hmm. And in July, the very last day of June, we're leaving. And then we'll be there, Dubai and Egypt. And um, b we planted, all nations, mi uh, Living Fountains Church planted a church in Egypt last year. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a one year anniversary for that baby church. And so we're going back to celebrate with our, um, our baby church mm -hmm. and, um, and encourage them and, 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 and work with them. And, and uh, those of us that are, that are planning to go, we're, we're all very, very excited about you know, the opportunity to see the growth and the manifestation. Mm -hmm. And we are always receiving uh, videos and, and text messages and pictures and things like that about uh, the services that they're doing and what's been going on and how they're growing and how the Lord is really just developing the, the, the uh, saints our brothers and sisters, yes. as, as, as it were, um, over there in Egypt and how they're thriving and flourishing. And it's, it's just exciting. It's wonderful to see that because especially when you know that they're living in a, a, um, a country, so to s that is pretty much, um, um, for, all, for want of a better word, a little bit oppressive in terms of mm -hmm. Christianity, um, uh, other religious religions are very well known in that part of the world, but Christianity is like you know you know th that's something that uh, uh, in 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 reality is like well you don't want to be too outward and bold about that, but our baby church members are outward and bold about it, and. They are protected. They are they ha they have the hedge of, the, of 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 protection about them. They're, they are being surrounded by prayer yes. and intercession, not just here but from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so we we're, we're cheering them on. You know, we're not the great cloud of witness <laughs> because we're not you know in that realm. But we're the earthly crowd. Uh, crowd of witness that is cheering them yes. on and urging them on and wanting them to do better. And so this is just a baby church, but Bishop has been successful in planting churches in over 50 nations mm -hmm. all over the world. I believe that All Nations has over 700 churches planted. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of work and that's a lot of resources. It's a lot of energy, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of planning, it's a lot of coordination, and it takes a lot to do it. it but we have a bishop that has a heart to do it. You know, she's, she's just built uh, Bishop Nikki Nkuru Ogamba. She's just, um, she has a heart for the nation, she is truly sent to the kingdom of God. And we follow her as she follows Christ. And, um, but it takes a lot. So again, I'm imploring those of you that, you know, uh, want to help and that the Lord maybe is speaking to your heart, you know, to see what you can do. How can I help? get some finances or resources to the nations of the world. There is an address that's right there on your screen that you can send 
uh, donations, you can send money uh, to help the, the work of missions for All Nations Living Fountains Church. And uh, is there also a website where I think that they can go, is um, a website address where they can go? Mm -hmm. And I believe you can go on the website and you can register there and you can also uh, make donations and financial arrangements on that website as well that will support missions. All you have to do in your, in your uh, reference um, of your giving is say that it's for missions, the work of missions, and it will be recorded accurately, okay? So um, I wanna go back to my sister here about um, the work that you have done. I, I tell me a story, another story about uh, something that the Lord had done for you and Ron while you were on the mission field and that, I don't know, I want to say this kind of blows your mind, <laughs> but it's just like, it's so like him, it, it, it shouldn't be mind blowing, but it, but it, it thrills your heart. <laughs> There's so many stories. I know. I, I, re I really feel a desire to share this one. Okay. Uh, as you know, my husband and I both are ordained ministers. And, yes. Um, I always say we can marry them and we can bury them, okay? Uh -huh. And we can birth them, uh -oh. okay, birth them into the kingdom. But physical birth, there was one young lady that uh, had been working with us and had come to sit under us each year that we would come. And uh, she got married, and there was some schism in her marriage, and her husband um, wanted to leave her. And uh, just as they were going through the process of, you know, she wanted the marriage, she says, no, I want to be alone. Um, she got pregnant. And I'll never forget, she pulled over to the side of the boat road and called me. And she was crying, saying, how could this happen? I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. My husband's saying it's not his baby. But it is, I've not been with another man. And I'm using their accent, I love uh -huh, to. Uh -huh. And so I says, it's okay, it's okay. And so I prayed her through, walked her through the pregnancy month after month. And so it, um, she's, the baby was due in September. Mm -hmm. And we were going back in September at that time. As a matter of fact, that time, Ap Apostle Price and Dr. Betty went at the same time with us. Okay. To Pastor uh, Bishop Mrs. Sono's church. And so anyway, uh, I told the young lady, because the husband was still acting silly, and he said, I can't, I'm not going to be there. That's not my baby, not my baby. And so she, her mother was estranged. She was in another area. She didn't have anybody. I said, tell the baby to wait. I'll be there before the baby's born. Mm -hmm. And so she says, oh, Mama, Mama, I hope you're here, but I don't know, I don't know. And so I says, tell the baby to wait. I'll be there. Mm -hmm got into Johannesburg three hour, hours later the baby was born <laughs> the baby three waited. hours <laughs> later the doctor says it was so cute because he says are you going to the uh, theater with us I said theater I said I'm from LA Hollywood but I'm not into theater arts I'm thinking well they call the operating room the theater oh because you can see yes oh, they okay have it. and okay. so I said, sure. I scrubbed up, put my little things on, went in there. The baby was born cesarean. The baby waited. And the funny thing is, the baby looked just like the older child, identical to the older child, mm -hmm. which was the husband's child, which he did not deny. Uh -huh. And so I said, take the blanket from the first baby's birth, wrap the new baby in the blanket, the same blanket, and we'll take a dual picture. Because uh -huh. we'll we had one of the first baby uh -huh. wrapped and then we had the new baby. And the brother looked at the picture and he says, oh, there's two pictures of the, ba of the, the same oldest baby. child. Uh -huh. I said, no, that's the, old, the original baby, the first baby, and this is the second one. Now, it's been eight years, and the baby, the husband, they're divorced, but he has received the baby and is loving on the baby. Aww. But it was just a miracle to see how God got me there. Mm -hmm within three hours, and the baby was born. No delay. And you he said, tell okay. that rascal to wait. Wait. I said, <laughs> and I spoke it out. 
wait. Tell the baby to wait. Tell that baby to wait, and the baby waited. And it's obedient. Amen. Amen. Well, that's obedient. it. <laughs> That's an interesting story. I have many story. stories to I tell. I know, oh. I know, I know. Yes. Well, and so we, so do I. I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, trying to think of uh, another interesting story. Well, um, <laughs> I'll tell you what's interesting about. Now, you know that I'm a, a, a psalmist. Of course. <laughs> a psalmist by gifting. And... Uh, and I go, and, and primarily when I, when I go on mission work, you know, this is what I uh, expect to do. Mm -hmm. But um, if I don't, we're not going to go back and show the, um, the video again of, of me on the mission field. But as you saw, I had on the blue gloves, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was there, <laughs> and I was working um, in the medical mission. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is, is that I really came to be an assistant to the nurse mm -hmm. who was assigned to the medical uh, mission at that time. I was, you know, going to change lancets and, you know, hand you things and stuff like that. And she decided <laughs> that she, oh, it's a good time for you to just be trained and, you know, to just jump on in and, and just be trained. So she flipped the table on me. She didn't say it. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't tell me that she was going to do this, but um, she, she was the one being the assistant and had me doing uh, the actual, you know, work the, uh, with the, uh, the people that were in the medical mission. Mm -hmm. And I, it wasn't that uh, afraid or anything like that. I, I thought it was really interesting. But you know what? The beautiful thing about that was is that I had to go to another mission where we didn't have all of the trained team members, the, the nurse uh, staff of the team members, mm -hmm. so we had to do it. See, preparation. And, 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 uh, and it was when I went to uh, Kinshasa, Congo, and we were in Tumba, and we were actually conducting the, uh, the medical mission in, in Tumba. And because I had that uh, experience there in Egypt by, by doing it, mm -hmm. I had not only experience, but I had the confidence, yes. you know, to, to just go ahead, mm -hmm. to do it, to embrace it, and to take care of it. And so that was the blessing, you know, of having been thrown into it, you know, or having the table switched on me from being an assistant as to being the actual nurse practitioner. Now, there was a huge difference, though, uh, between the people <laughs> that were in, in Egypt and the people that were in Tumba. Uh, one is that um, we had a, a specific clientele in Egypt. They were more like, you know, some of the pastors and people that were part of the conference, you know, that were there. So uh, the, um, the way that they came to the mission uh, to, to be addressed and what have you was one way. Now, when you get to uh, 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 the locals, or the natives, you know, the, the, there's a little, there's a whole different dynamic yeah. that's happening. There's, there's shoving, and there's people that want to be seen, and they're, they're, they're wanting, it's like, I, me first, you know, I got to be in there, you know. And then also, I was noticing that there was a, a toughness of the skin on, especially on some of the males. And it's from the work and stuff that they did, so like being able to do the glucose. You would pierce it, and there nothing would happen. It was just not getting enough far enough below that rough that uh, exterior to really uh, allow you to draw the blood. blood. Mm -hmm. And so there was a a nurse that's there. Then then she showed me another technique, you know, like of getting it closer to the, the nail, the the bed of the nail, so that that you could um, uh, draw the blood a little bit easier, like that. So anyway. That was uh, interesting, you know, it was, it was far removed from singing, trust me, mm -hmm. <laughs> from singing a song and learning a song and ministering from, from uh, uh, music. So we're getting close to the end of the program, and Josie, I want you to talk about this new assignment that you have. Uh, it's not... Uh, an external mission, I should say. Actually, I call it an internal mission here in the United States, but it's with the youth. Please, um, 
we'd like to get some information about that whole program you've got going. Wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity again to share. Um, we're having a youth summit. It's called Ignite Youth Empowerment Summit on August the 3rd at Crenshaw Christian Center. We've been blessed uh, with their campus for that day. It is to empower youth to know the reality of Jesus Christ as Lord. This generation, there's so many things that they are faced with that we were never, ever faced with. Right. And their solution, the solution to everything is Jesus Christ. Yes. And so this summit, we are expecting youth from all over L.A. County, San Bernardino, the IE, San Diego. Even I met someone this past weekend down in San Diego that has a church, and they said, Get, send us information. If we can come up, we will be there. And so we're really excited about it. It's going to be a great uh, time for parents also to learn how to speak to their children. Is there a and cost? And not push them away. There is a cost. It is because there's food involved. There's uh, other materials and things. It's $25 for early bird registration, and that's all the way through July 3rd, July 3rd. And then it goes up to $30 after that because we'll have to do more work getting things settled. So it's going to be wonderful. You can go um, to, may I get the website Please. address? Okay. Uh, the webmaster is still putting that part of it together, but it's uh, www.d, like David, G, like George, the number four, life, L-I-F-E, dot org. So that's dg4life.org, and you'll be signing up for the Youth Summit. If you would like to email me, you can email me at josie, J-O-S-I-E, at dg4life.org, and I can give you more information. We want participation from all over, all over L.A. County, San Bernardino, Southern California, period. It's going to be a great time. Thank you so much for letting me share that. Well, thank you for um, uh, sharing that information about the youth conference. Now, do you think that there will be spots available at the door if, if, if some youth want to come at to the door? Uh, there sh should be. We always you know, uh, provide for more. You know. uh, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I know we how do. it is. Mm -hmm. And I, I know you said that you were hoping to have over 1,000 youth. Uh, over 1,000 youth. Over 1,000 youth there. So it sounds very exciting. Yes. It sounds yes. like it's going to be very yes. beneficial yes. for uh, the youth. Is, are there, is there an age group uh, for From 10 to 110 because we're going to help the parents and the adults know how to deal with their people. Okay, so mm. you're teaching youth and their parents. Yes. Okay. Because the parents have to know how to talk to their youth to help them grow and go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope that those of you that are hearing are able to take advantage of it and send your young people that way. And uh, that's about all that we have time for today. So until next time, God loves you, so do I. Bye-bye.